The handgun was conceived and designed as a close-range weapon. The history of its use by private citizens, lawmen, and members of the military has repeatedly confirmed its effectiveness at this range and established it as the dominant close-quarter combat weapon. This history has also shown a clear pattern with regard to the circumstances in which a handgun will typically be used. The vast majority of recorded handgun shooting incidents have occurred at very close range, in low light, and under conditions of extreme stress. Recent statistics confirm that this pattern continues today. The FBI's 1992 Law Enforcement Officers Killed and Assaulted Report provides details of officers feloniously killed by firearms over a 10-year period. According to this report, 500 officers were killed by handguns, 94 by rifles, and 56 by shotguns, for a total of 650. Three hundred sixty-seven of the officers were shot at ranges of five feet or less, one hundred twenty-seven at ranges of six to ten feet, seventy-seven at eleven to twenty feet, and seventy-nine at twenty feet or more. Sixty-two percent of the officers killed were shot between six p.m. and six a.m. during the hours of darkness. The most important thing to remember about using a handgun combatively is that you will be doing so because you fear for your life. Fear of this type causes extreme emotional stress and a series of predictable and unavoidable physical responses. These responses are instinctive and will almost always override your ability to perform coordinated movements which rely on skills acquired through training. These instinctive reactions include crouching, thus presenting a smaller target, squaring your body with the threat, focusing your vision intently on the threat, and convulsive muscle contractions, which override or prevent the use of learned skills. The only way to overcome these instinctive reactions is through continuous intensive training. While this may be feasible for competition shooters, SWAT team members, and elite military personnel, for the average citizen or law enforcement officer with limited time and resources for training, it is not practical. Additionally, in situations of extreme fear and surprise, it is not uncommon for even highly trained shooters to abandon consciously learned firing methods and revert to instinctive responses. Based on statistics compiled from actual gunfights, we know what the circumstances of a typical gunfight will be. From human nature, we know how the body will react to the extreme stress of a life-threatening situation. It makes sense, then, that practical combat shooting technique should be based on this real-world knowledge. And so it was. During World War II, Colonel Rex Applegate, close combat instructor to the secret operatives of the Office of Strategic Services, or OSS, and U.S. Army Military Intelligence, developed an extremely effective method of close-quarter combat shooting. The nucleus of this method was a system of combat shooting developed by British commando trainers W.E. Fairburn and E.A. Sykes while serving with the Shanghai Municipal Police during the early 20th century. The collaboration of Applegate, Fairburn, and Sykes resulted in a method of combat point shooting which allowed the effective delivery of fire at close range in virtually any light conditions without the use of sights. This method was taught to thousands of U.S. and Allied operatives and successfully applied in combat countless times during World War II. The training methods and techniques developed by these individuals were revolutionary and predated many so-called modern methods popularized decades later. These included practices such as the use of moving and bobbing targets and a sophisticated indoor range called the House of Horrors, predecessor of later kill houses used by special operations forces and SWAT teams. This rare archival footage from declassified OSS files shows W.E. Fairburn himself accompanying a trainee during live fire exercises in the House of Horrors.
Although Applegate's point shooting technique was proven countless times in battle, these hard-earned lessons and the tremendous advances in combat training methods made by Applegate, Fairburn, and Sykes were largely forgotten after World War II. In the decades since then, numerous other combat shooting methods have been introduced. However, unlike point shooting, these techniques were developed primarily for competition-style combat shooting matches. These matches, no matter how competitive they may be, cannot duplicate the psychological and physical stress of an actual gunfight, where winning is measured in terms of lives, not trophies. More importantly, the effectiveness of point shooting as a combat method for the average shooter has been conclusively proven. As the saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Point shooting relies on the body's instinctive ability to point at nearby objects with reasonable accuracy. This basic form of eye-hand coordination is an ability that people develop during childhood and refine throughout their lifetimes. It is so natural and so well ingrained that it is not greatly affected, even when the body is suffering reactions to extreme stress. The mechanics of instinctive pointing are very simple. The eyes focus on the target, then the arm is raised until the hand breaks the line of sight. By keeping the elbow and wrist locked and raising the arm like a pump handle, a very accurate and consistent alignment of the pointing hand and the line of sight can be achieved. When a handgun is properly gripped and aligned with the arm, this innate ability to point accurately can be adapted to quickly aim the gun at close range targets without using the gun's sights. The barrel of the gun simply replaces your finger. The result is the ability to deliver fire quickly and accurately at close range, in low light, and while experiencing the natural human reactions to extreme stress. This ability is exactly what is needed in a typical gunfight. It is also why point shooting should be the foundation of all combat shooting technique. The need to deliver fire in a gunfight depends directly upon how immediate a threat the opponent or target is to you. The closer your opponent is, the more immediate the threat, and the greater the need to fire your weapon quickly. Gonna kill you! In close quarter situations, the instinctive reactions to stress take over, and responses are generally limited to natural instinctive movements. Conversely, the farther away your opponent is, the less immediate your need to fire. The more time you have before you must fire, the greater your chances of composing yourself and overcoming the instinctive reactions to stress. Overcoming or at least minimizing these instinctive reactions can allow you to utilize a shooting technique which requires a greater degree of coordination. It can also allow you to switch your visual focus from the threat to your weapon sights. Realistic combat shooting technique therefore becomes a continuum which ranges from contact distance, so-called hip shooting, to two-handed sighted fire. Where you fire along this continuum is based on your distance to the target, the perceived threat, and your ability to control the instinctive physical responses to stress. The stance for close quarter combat shooting is based on the instinctive physical reactions to stress. Again, those are crouching, squaring the body with the threat, visually focusing on the threat, and convulsive muscle contraction. From a relaxed posture, take one natural step forward and flex your knees to assume a balanced crouch. You may step with either foot, 
and it is a good idea to become proficient firing with either foot forward. Your gun hand should be extended downward at about a 45 degree angle, and your free hand should be held out to the side for balance. This stance incorporates the instinctive stress responses and is therefore a sound basis for all close quarter combat shooting. A proper grip is crucial to effective combat shooting technique. Place the gun firmly in the web of the hand, making sure that the barrel is perfectly aligned with the forearm. This allows the barrel to act as a natural extension of the arm. Grip the gun convulsively so that the hand trembles, as this is how you will naturally grip it in the stress of an actual gunfight. The first phase of combat shooting is the body point. This technique is designed to be used only at extremely close range. To perform this technique, first assume an instinctive crouch. Then, keeping your gun arm elbow pressed tightly against your ribs, raise your forearm straight ahead and level it at the target. If the gun is properly gripped, it will naturally point where the forearm does. At ranges from muzzle contact out to about five feet, this firing technique is extremely effective. Aiming in this manner yields acceptable close range accuracy and the bent arm posture protects the gun hand from being grabbed. To shift your fire laterally when using the body point, pivot on the balls of your feet, turning your body like a turret until you face the target directly. Keep your gun arm elbow pressed tightly to your side and turn your entire body. This allows for more accurate fire than simply moving your arm and keeps your body squared with the threat.